Thank you, General Lynch. We'll now proceed under the five-minute rule with questions for the witnesses, and I'll begin by recognizing myself. Before being confirmed as Attorney General in May of last year, you were first nominated by President Obama to serve as the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, and you were originally appointed to the U.S. Attorney Post in 1999 by former President Bill Clinton. The existence of Secretary Clinton's private email server was first brought to light in March of last year, one month before your confirmation as Attorney General. A few months after your confirmation, the Inspectors General of State and National Intelligence requested the Department of Justice investigate whether classified information was stored on her private email servers. The FBI then opened an investigation into the matter. Given that she was a political appointee of your current boss, and more importantly, the wife of your previous boss, why did you not see fit to recuse yourself from the investigation? Wouldn't recusal or appointment of a special prosecutor have removed any appearance of impropriety given your service during Bill Clinton's presidency? Thank you for the question, Mr. Chairman. As I've said on several occasions before, when the referral came into the Department of Justice, it was received and referred to experienced, dedicated career agents and prosecutors who handle matters of this type every day with independence, with efficiency, with thoroughness, and the matter was handled like any other matter. Uh, it was reviewed uh, through the chain by those independent career agents and prosecutors. And in considering the matter, uh, there was no connection uh, there was no need for a recusal or an independent prosecutor. Well, and as I indicated before, I'm incredibly proud of the dedicated work that they did over the past year. Well, let me follow well, up I on that then. Two weeks ago, roughly a year into the FBI's investigation and a mere week before Director Comey's announcement, you met privately with your former boss, former President Bill Clinton, on your plane at the Phoenix airport. Why was this meeting particularly in light of your previous appointment by President Clinton, not grounds for recusing yourself. With respect to my conversation that I had with former President Clinton in Phoenix, it was a conversation that was held uh, on the airplane, on the tarmac. Uh, the former president indicated he wanted to say hello, and I agreed to say hello, and we, ended, we had a social conversation. Nothing of um, any relationship to the email investigation was discussed, nor were any specific cases or matters before the Department of Justice discussed. We'll have some follow-up questions to that uh, later, but let me turn your attention to Director Comey's conclusions on a variety of points. Secretary Clinton stated that she never sent or received information marked as classified on her server. Director Comey stated that was not true. Do you agree with Director Comey? You know, Director Comey has chosen to provide great detail into the basis for his recommendations that were ultimately provided to me. He's chosen to provide detailed statements, and I would refer you to those statements. I, as Attorney General, am not able to provide any further comment on the facts or the substance of the investigation. Well, General Lynch, I think you would agree that the ultimate responsibility for a prosecutorial decision does not rest with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but with the Department of Justice, which you head. Uh, have you not taken a close look at the work done by Director Comey, especially given the extreme national interest uh, in this issue, to make a determination yourself whether you and those working for you uh, agree or disagree with Director Comey? As I've indicated, I received the recommendation of the team, and that team was composed of prosecutors and agents. It was a unanimous recommendation as to how to resolve the investigation so and you, to what the, what do the information that they had received Do you agree uh, with the concluded? conclusion? And I accepted that recommendation. I saw no reason not to accept it. And again, I reiterate my pride and faith in their work. Secretary Clinton stated that she did not email any classified material, and Director Comey stated there was classified material emailed. Do you agree with Director Comey's conclusion about that? Again, I would have to refer you to Director Comey's statements for the basis for his recommendation. Director Comey stated that there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information. Do you agree with Director Comey's statement? Again, I would refer you to Director Comey for any further explanation as to the basis for his recommendations. The recommendation that I received from the team, including Director Comey, but General was Lynch, that the investigation be resolved General without Lynch, charges. Director Comey made a recommendation, but he made a recommendation to the Department of Justice, which you had. 
uh, and you would have to come to the final conclusion on whether or not to act, I would presume uh, that before you acted, you would look at his conclusions and determine whether you agreed with them or not. As I've indicated, I received a briefing from the team, which included not just the prosecutors, but the agents and Director Comey. Their unanimous recommendation was that the matter be resolved in the way in which we've announced, and I accepted that recommendation. Well, let me ask you one final question that does not regard uh, the specific facts with regard to Secretary Clinton. Uh, but Director Comey said that there was not clear evidence that Secretary Clinton or her colleagues intended to violate laws governing the handling of classified information. My question for you is, is intent to violate the law a requirement under 18 U.S.C. Section 793F? Well, Congressman, I think the statutes that were considered here speak for themselves. Uh, to answer further would require a discussion of the facts and the analysis of this matter, which, as I've indicated, I'm not in a position to provide at this time. Again, I prefer you to Director Comey's discussion for that. As I've indicated, the team reviewed this matter, and it was a unanimous team decision. And you made a decision following their recommendation to you uh, that you were not going to prosecute and the matter was closed. Is that correct? I made the decision uh, some time ago that I would accept the recommendation of the team and was awaiting that recommendation. When I received it, there was no basis not And 18 U.S.C. section 1924. Uh, and to conclude that no prosecution would take place without examining and drawing conclusions regarding the questions that I've just asked does not seem to be uh, a responsible way to uphold your constitutionally sworn oath. At this time, I recognize the aisle, Mr. Jordan, and would ask the gentleman if he would yield very briefly to the chair. I thank the gentleman for yielding. General Lynch, we are now about halfway through the members of this uh, committee asking questions. And your refusal to yes, answer sir. questions regarding one of the most important investigations of someone who seeks to serve in the highest office in this land is an abdication of your responsibility. This is a very important issue of whether or not the Justice Department is going to uphold the rule of law in this country, and I hope that with the questions that will be forthcoming now, you will be more forth forthcoming with answers. Thank you. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Lynch, who made the decision that no charges would be brought against Secretary Clinton? Congressman, with respect to that decision, I had determined that I would accept the recommendation of the team. So who, I made that known. who ultimately made the decision? I made that known, and then when the recommendation was given to me, I did accept that recommendation. So did, did you ultimately make that decision, or did Director Comey? Well, Director Comey was part of the team. Who ultimately made the decision? So the team consisted of prosecutors and agents. That did include Director Comey, I but there were the others. I where the stops. Who made the decision? As I indicated before, I had previously decided that I would accept their recommendation when they made it to so are me. You, are you saying you made the decision? Their recommendation. Are you saying you made the decision? I had previously indicated I would accept their recommendation. Okay, so on July 1st, let's just run through that. On July 1st, you said I'll accept the recommendations of the FBI. Mr. Comey didn't announce his decision until July 5th, and he said that he didn't talk to you beforehand. Now, I assume it's not unusual for the Attorney General to accept the recommendations of the FBI and the career prosecutors and the team, as you've so often cited. What is unusual is to make a big, bold public announcement that you're going to do it. It's one thing to do it. I assume it happens all the time. It's another thing to announce ahead of time you're going to do it. So here's what I'm having trouble with, my guess a lot of people are having trouble with. If you commit and announce that you will abide by the FBI's decision before they even finish their investigation, then how can you also say ultimately it was your decision? Well, Congressman, as I've indicated, I accepted their recommendation. I had indicated So are you, uh, what I want to that, know is, was it not your decision or was it, it your decision? Because it seems to me you can't have it both ways. You can't say, I'm the Attorney General and I decide, but yet I'm going to take their recommendations even before they make their recommendations. I had indicated that I would be accepting their recommendation because I wanted to make it clear that any conversation that I might have had with the former president would have no impact yeah. on the team or the review ever do this or before? the investigation. You ever do this before? I have not had occasion to do that before, but you've I felt never, it was important So you've in never this case. announced before an investigation is done that whatever they come up with, maybe they're going to screw it up. Who knows? What you, you've never announced before that whatever they recommend, I'm going to follow. Never happened before. It was before. important in this case to do so. So this is the first time you've ever done that. Announced beforehand, I don't care what their recommendations are, I'm going to, by golly, I'm going to follow them. 
I have complete faith in the judgment and the hard work of I'm the team. I'm not questioning whether you have faith in them. I, have, I, I think probably a lot of people have faith in the FBI in a lot of situations. I don't know if they agree with them here, but I think they have faith a lot of times. What I'm questioning is why announce ahead of time when you've never done it before, why announce ahead of time, I'm going to follow their recommendations even though I don't know what they are and still claim you're the ultimate decider? Well, as I indicated, I felt it was important to express my role in the investigation to clarify my role because I was concerned that the conversation I had with the former president would make people think that there could be some influence. So that there. was the trigger? That, in my view, was something that needed to be clarified. I felt that people needed to understand so my role you've never done this. this before, but and when you have a conversation have that, with uh, the former president, the husband of the subject of an ongoing investigation, and you have that conversation before they've interviewed the subject, and before they've reached their recommendations and finished their investigation, that's what triggered you to do this thing you've never done before, which is announce, I don't care what they recommend, I'm going to follow it. My concern was that, that the, the conversation that I had with President Clinton would be seen by some as having an influence over that. I felt it was important to clarify. Just some, Gerardo Lynch, role. a lot and of people. And I felt it was important to clarify that even before I had landed in Phoenix, well, I had made what that I decision. Think. Here's, here's what I, I see I felt it was here. important that people hear that from me. Here's what I think is, I think your actions made it worse. I really do. I think a lot of people already think that there are two systems, as many have talked about, one for we the people, a different one, entirely different one for the politically connected. Your former Secretary of State, your former Senator, your former First Lady, your nominee for President, your husband meets with, the, meets with you five days before a decision is announced. Different standard for those, those facts. And you proved it. You demonstrated that it's different by your actions because you said you've never done this before, so you not only you, you changed your internal practices. You changed the fact that you've never announced beforehand that you're going to follow recommendations before you even have the recommendations. You contribute, your actions contribute to, to, to this, this belief that the system is rigged. And that, you made a bad situation worse by saying, I'm going to do whatever they recommend, even though I don't know what the recommendations are. I don't know anyone who would conduct themselves that way when they're the ultimate decider. But you said, I'm going to wait. I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever they said, and I'm not even going to wait to see what they're recommending. I'm going to follow it. You showed that this case was different, and the law is supposed to treat every single person the same. And your announcement, by definition, made this thing entirely different. And then, of course, what was ultimately decided made it entirely different as well. I yield back. Give you some. The gentleman from Utah, Mr. Chaffetz, for five minutes, and then. Uh, we will recess to give the uh, general a, an opportunity for a brief break, but we'll resume immediately after. Uh, I thank the chairman and uh, Madam Attorney General. Thank you so much for being here. After does you. does an individual need a security clearance to review or have access to classified material? Congressman, that issue would be dependent upon the agency for whom they worked and the nature of the work that they did um, with can respect you, to every agency, and the agency would make that decision and determination. Is it legal or illegal to share classified information with somebody who doesn't have a security clearance? Congressman, I, it depends on the facts of, this, of every situation. You'd have to determine that how that sharing occurred. You'd have to determine the means. You'd have to determine um, you know, the reason, the intent. Um, certainly, depending upon how you view the statute, it could go any number of ways. Do you think there is a scenario in which you could share classified information with somebody who doesn't have the requisite security clearance? No, I would not draw that conclusion. I would say that I'm not able to answer it as a hypothetical, but that there are a number of factors that would go into the decision, and one could have any number of results. Is it legal or illegal to provide access to somebody who doesn't have the requisite security clearance to view classified material? To provide access? Yeah. Again, um, you know, again, I'd need more facts on the hypothetical, but I would look at a number of things, and is depending it, upon how you reviewed it, it could go any number of ways. Is it legal or illegal to store, house, or retain classified information in a non-secure location? Again, I would refer you to the statute. One could, in fact, uh, have liability. Again, depending upon the nature and facts and circumstances. Do you have any examples of where it's legally acceptable to retain classified information in a non-secure location? I don't have a hypothetical answer for that. 
Is it legal or illegal to provide false testimony under oath? There are a number of statutes that cover that, both at the federal and state level. Um, there are a number of ways in which that could be found. You, you th <laughs> There's a difference between prosecuting something and whether it's legal or illegal. You know, these questions are pretty simple. And we've got millions of people with security clearance. How are they supposed to go through the gyrations that you've laid out in order to make a simple determination? Congressman, if we had a specific fact situation or fact pattern, that could be reviewed. I'm just when asking, When it comes to a hypothetical situation, it would be unfair to come up with a blanket answer to someone without reviewing all the facts of their situation. I'm asking if it's legal or illegal to share classified information with somebody who doesn't have a security clearance. Again, I refer you to the appropriate statutes, and I refer you to the facts of every situation. It would be unfair to give a blanket answer to every hypothetical. Why aren't we telling all the federal employees and contractors who have access to classified information, those in our military, why aren't we telling them, you can't do this, it's against the law? Why can't you say that? We give them guidance. Again, every agency does. We give them examples. We give them information as wait, to wait, how to wait. make those decisions. We show them. Um, and again, every information why, provides, why every is agency the, provides Why is that, the law me. not sufficient guidance? You believe, is there a flaw in the law? Or is there a suggestion on the law? I mean. I don't have a comment on the state of the law. My answer is that so, in order. Somebody asked me, somebody asked to me to provide? consult an attorney. And you are the attorney general. And I think you're sending a terrible message to, to the world, to those people who are trying to make some simple decisions. The, the lack of clarity that you give to this body, the lack of clarity on this issue is pretty stunning. These seem like simple issues. Um, let me ask you, the team that you talk about in the Secretary Clinton email scandal, um, outside of the FBI, who was on that team that you referred to that made the recommendation? As I indicated before, they would be career uh, prosecutors. Okay, so they're prosecutors. Anybody else on the team that was a uh, participant in the investigation? Not to my knowledge. I'm not sure if you're referring to anybody else. Can you give me some further context for that? I don't know. Like, if they go back and do security clearances, determine classification, whether it's secure or non-secure, I would think that there'd be somebody outside of the FBI that would help you make those determinations. Well, the Department of Justice team would be Department of Justice employees. I'm trying to ask to specific to which departments within the department. I mean, Department of Justice is a large organization, right? FBI is part of that. Prosecutors are part of it. Who above and beyond prosecutors in the FBI was involved in this, in this uh, investigation? As I've indicated before, the, the DOJ team was composed of the career lawyers and seasoned agents in there. If, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're asking about I something outside of DOJ. I didn't know if there was another DOJ. unit or other people that were part of it. That was my question. My time has expired. I wish I had about 20 more minutes. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Field back. That recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Gowdy, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Madam Attorney General, the central uh, issue to me is, is this perception uh, frankly rooted in some realities of, of a dual track or two-tiered justice system. Um, and I know that you have dedicated your career um, to, the, to the pursuit of justice. I know you work for a blindfolded woman who's holding nothing but a set of scales. And, and I think it's important that, that she's blindfolded because she shouldn't see the race, the gender, the socioeconomic status, the fame or lack of fame of the person in front of her. And, and, and I'm sure you've experienced it like some of the rest of us. It's not just the suspect or the target or the defendant. The witnesses have to have confidence in the justice system. The jurors have to have confidence in the justice system. The public has to have confidence in the justice system. So the, the, this dual track, different set of rules for certain people than for others. It frankly should not matter whether you are running for president or running late to a kid's ball game. The same rules ought to apply to everyone. So let me ask you this. Why do you think it's important to use official email to conduct official business? I believe it's, it's important to do that. I think that um Certainly, every department has chosen to craft the way in which they carry out their business, and it provides for a way of doing business in a secure system. So you use official email to conduct official business? 
Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And do you ever email, send or receive classified information on personal email? I do not. Um, I doubt you even use your usdoj.gov account to send classified information, do you? We have separate systems. Right. Uh, so there would be a separate um, classified system. system for that. Right. So not only do you not use personal email to do it, you don't even use your usdoj.gov. You have a separate dedicated system to handle classified information. Why? We have a separate system to handle the security needs. But my question is why? Why is it important enough to you to not use personal email to conduct public business and to use a separate, more safely guarded system when you do handle classified information? That is the practice that I've certainly always followed. It but allows it's not for the just protection. Your, I mean, it's not just a personal preference, is no, it? No, it allows for the protection of the, of the uh, information, both on a regular system, because again, that's still sensitive, law enforcement types of matters, and then a classified system for separately classified information. What element do you think was lacking in the statutes that you evaluated as it relates to Secretary Clinton? So let me, again, um, as I've indicated before, and I, and I got, want to make it clear that, um, as I indicated before, while the reason why I would not be going into the analysis that was provided and the discussion that we had uh, between myself and the team is because we protect our teams and that they have to be free to provide information and analysis in a confidential way uh, without the, imp the, the fear or impact of there being a political influence on that. I, I understand and that is why that. I have not gone into that type of discussion. What I can tell you is that the team did evaluate the, stat the relevant statutes that were considered uh, in this investigation. They looked at all of the facts and evidence, and as in every case, they applied them to that statute right, to determine but, whether but the elements had been But my specific question met. to you, Madam Attorney General, is what element of which offense did you find lacking from an evidentiary standpoint? Well, I would say that in order to answer that, I would have to go into the entire level of analysis. Well, don't, don't, don't you think yes. public perception in, in, in a single track justice system is important enough that you could at least touch on what you thought was lacking? Uh, Congressman, in this case, we have taken the unusual step of discussing it in ways that the department typically does not in order to provide more clarity into this situation. And while I understand that it is frustrating to a number of people, uh, civilians as well as members of this body alike, uh, we have taken extraordinary steps to discuss this matter in ways that typically we do not. Well, let me ask you this. Particularly when charges Speak are not brought. And as I indicated before, just so it's clear, my reasons for not going into the substance of the information that I receive and review before I made my decision to accept the recommendation are that the teams that I work with, whether it's this case or any other, be free to provide confidential analysis, discussion, uh, without the input of any With all due respect, Madam Attorney influence. General, um, you can do all of what you just described and still tell the people what element, I mean, the elements of a criminal offense are public, so that's not, there's no secret there. And for you to go through the elements and say, as Director Comey did, he said there was no specific intent. I'm out of time, but I suspect you have prosecuted reckless homicide cases, haven't you? Um, in the context of violent crime. How about involuntary manslaughter? Uh, in, for the department or personally? No, just as a prosecutor. Um, there, there's involuntary manslaughter. There's reckless homicide. homicide. There's felony DUI where you really didn't mean to hurt anybody. You, you really didn't, but you did. And this lack of specific intent is not a defense in any of those cases. So I think the public would like to know how you determine she did not have the intent to break the law and why you are applying a specific intent requirement here when you don't even do it in certain homicide cases. Well, Congressman, as I've said, well, I think you've mentioned a number of state cases there. Uh, but as I've said, the reason why I am not going into the discussion I had and providing that particular level of information, although the FBI director did choose to do so, is that the information the team provides to me on this or any other case has to be given in a zone of confidentiality so that they can be clear and sure that there's never a political overtone to their decisions, nor will I apply one in accepting their decisions. That's why we have taken the unusual steps of providing greater information, as frustrating as that has been for a number 
number of people uh, to have additional information. That's why I took the unusual step of clarifying my role in this investigation. Well, I'm, I'm out of time. The only thing I find frustrating is that even after this and Director Comey, people still believe that if you are famous, there's a different set of rules than if people don't know your name. And, and I think you're missing a wonderful opportunity to say with specificity which, which evidentiary element you found lacking. So Congress can go fix the statute if you think we need to. But right now, we have no idea whether or not a President Lynch could do exactly what Secretary Clinton did or whether President Clinton could do exactly what Secretary Clinton did. And I think that lack of clarity is bad for the republic, quite frankly. I would yield back.